Around 150,000 people live and work in the municipalities of Lake Zug, Lake Kusnacht, and Lake Agari. In addition, 20,000 people commute to the region every day. Together, we produce around 45,000 cubic meters of wastewater every day. If it were allowed to flow directly into our streams, rivers, and lakes, these waters would be biologically dead within a few months. To prevent such a catastrophe, the Water Protection Association of the Zug region maintains a sewerage system that is over 75 kilometers long. It conveys wastewater from households, industry and hospitals to one of the largest sewage treatment plants in Switzerland, Ara Schönau in Cham. Since our launch of the treatment plant in 1977, we've been developing and modernizing each of the perfectly coordinated treatment steps ensuring that Ara Schönau constantly maintains its reputation as one of the cleanest sewage treatment plants in the world. What arrives here at the inlet of the treatment plant is a mixture of many different types of pollutants that may pose problems for the environment. One of the major challenges we face is that the composition of the wastewater constantly changes from day to day. In fact, from hour to hour. But the wastewater treatment plant has to remove every single one of these contaminants from the water within just one day. The treatment process is initiated by our bar screens. Every day, over a thousand kilograms of solids, such as paper, plastic, textiles, wood, and other waste, get caught here. Anything that is larger than five millimeters is filtered here. Large cones remove the waste from the bars of the rake. Screw conveyors take the mixture to a washing system. Then onto a screw press for draining. And finally to a container for transport to the nearest waste incineration plant. This way, the waste mixture, which can neither be recycled nor composted, is used to provide precious thermal energy. Still heavily polluted, the wastewater flows on to the next station, grit and grease removal. The wastewater is further purified in this treatment stage for about 10 minutes with the help of gravity. The water flow in these basins is intentionally weak, so that smaller stones and sand settle on the bottom of the basin, which can then be suctioned off. An aeration system ensures that the lighter constituents in the wastewater remain in suspension and thus reach the next purification stage. It also ensures that light grease is transported to the surface from where it can be removed. And around 100 tons of sand and solids, such as tomato seeds, go to a landfill every year. When it rains, the treatment plant is at its busiest. Three million square meters of streets, squares, paths and roofs are connected to the region's mixed water sewage system. In the event of rainfall, they deliver an enormous amount of water, which, in addition to the normal wastewater volume, must be collected and cleaned. After initial purification with bar screens, grit and grease separator, the rainwater sedimentation tank can store up to 1,000 cubic meters of wastewater for further purification stages. If the volume of rain and wastewater exceeds capacity, the stormwater basin must discharge part of the pre-treated wastewater directly into the Lotsa River. If the capacity is sufficient, however, this wastewater is conveyed to the next purification stage, the primary clarification. Here, the wastewater is left to rest for a period of time. The so-called fecal sludge, in particular human waste, settles at the bottom of the tank. 
light components float on the surface. The so-called clearer pushes the faecal sludge from the bottom and at the same time from the water surface of the tank into the sludge funnel. From there, the sludge is flushed into a collection tank. Every year, the clearer in Arachernau's primary clarification removes around 3,000 tons of faeces from the region's wastewater. Like all sewage sludge that accumulates in the plant, the sludge from the primary clarification makes its way to the digester. There, sewage sludge, occasionally toxic, is transformed into a precious raw material for energy recycling. Inside the digester, bacterial strains under hermetical sealing and at 38 degrees centigrade ensure that the mass of the sewage sludge is almost halved. The digested sludge is drained, loaded and transported to an incineration specialised for sewage sludge. In the digester, the bacteria produce carbon dioxide through their metabolism and, more importantly, methane, a precious raw material that is stored in the gasometer. Methane is the main component of sewage gas. Burned in an engine, it generates heat and more than 100% of the electricity that Arachernau requires for its entire operation. In the meantime, over a little over one and a half hours, the water leaves the primary clarification and is already 50% purified. What is left are impurities that are dissolved in the water, which are barely or not at all visible to the naked eye. For example, carbon or nitrogen compounds. But these will virtually vanish into thin air using an amazingly clever but simple method in the next purification stage. The biological treatment consists of a cycle of two phases. In one, the water is almost still, and in the other, the wastewater bubbles due to air oxygen being pressed into it. The wastewater treatment plant provides the best conditions for both phases. Highly specialised microorganisms. They feed on organic pollution and convert it into harmless compounds. At each wastewater treatment plant, a specific community of different microorganisms is formed in which there is a continuous battle between eat or be eaten. Certain microorganisms in the tank absorb nitrate and carbon compounds without aeration. The microorganisms use nitrate to break down the carbon compounds. They are literally breathed. Non-toxic nitrogen is generated as a waste product and can easily escape into the air. In the neighbouring ventilated tanks, there are other microorganisms that use oxygen to break down ammonium, amongst other things. Ammonium is derived mainly from urine and makes up a large part of the pollution in wastewater. Specific types of bacteria are used to convert this chemical compound first into nitrite and then into nitrate when oxygen is added. In the biological purification cycle, this nitrate is then fed into the unventilated tank as a nutrient for the bacteria, which also convert it into harmless nitrogen. Other specialised microorganisms are able to absorb phosphate from the wastewater. The phosphate must also be removed as it leads to eutrophication of water. After biological purification, the wastewater, enriched with feeding microorganisms, flows to the next station, the secondary clarification, where the water flows only very slowly, thus ensuring that the microorganisms in the sewage water sink to the bottom of the tank into the sludge funnel. From here, the microbe sludge either goes back to the next big feeding in the biological tank, or, if they have multiplied too much, as excess sludge in the digester. The water is now very clear, but it is not yet 100% clean. It contains micropollutants, for example from medication, birth control pills, solvents or detergents, which are toxic 
for fish, amphibians, insects or plants. An additional purification stage can solve this problem. With activated carbon powder and a so-called precipitant, a simple but highly effective combination. Activated carbon and the precipitant are mixed into the wastewater in liquid form. In the first step, some of the micropollutants bind to the porous grains of the activated carbon. The particles are so porous that they have a gigantic surface. One gram of activated carbon has a surface area of more than 1,000 square meters. Then, in the second step, the added precipitant in the contact tank ensures that the powdered activated carbon, together with micropollutants, clump into flakes. From the fourth purification stage, the water then makes its way to its last station, the sand filter. Before the wastewater finally leaves the plant, it is subjected to a final purification. The flocculated carbon particles with the bound micropollutants are also removed from the wastewater in the sand filtration. During this process, the water runs through two layers of differently fine sand. All remaining particles are thereby filtered out. If the sand filter is saturated, it is rinsed and the contaminated carbon is fed back into biological treatment, where it continues to absorb micropollutants and finally ends up in the digester together with the excess sludge. The treatment plant releases the almost completely purified water back into the environment directly via the sand filtration after only around 24 hours. Wastewater, purification, detoxification, generating energy and releasing clean water into the environment. All of this is done here at Arschernau, one of the most modern sewage treatment plants in the world.